Hello and welcome to this new series I am developing on social network mapping and Python for the digital humanities. Now in this series we're going to be working with basically a couple different modules in Python, NetworkX and Matplotlib. There they are right here. If you haven't done so already, I recommend right now pausing this video and using pip to install NetworkX and Matplotlib. If you have not already done so, I recommend watching my earlier entire series on the introduction to Python for DH. Um, it'll help make a lot of what I'm going to talk about in this series make a lot more sense. Because I am expecting you to come to this series with maybe some rudimentary understanding of how uh, data works in Python, uh, data structures in Python, and some basic commands like print. But a lot of the stuff is going to be new in this series, stuff that I haven't covered before because we're going to be using specifically functions that relate to these two uh, modules or libraries. So pause the video if you haven't done so and download uh, pip install NetworkX and matplotlib. Those are the actual names that you're going to use to pip install. And just as a refresher, in case you need to remember how to do it, you simply go to your command prompt and you simply type in pip, oh, pip install network X and matplotlib. It already says that I actually have these installed because I've already installed them. Uh, these are going to be the main ways in which we work with uh, network maps inside of Python. So now that you've downloaded all of those modules, let's go ahead and just jump right in. So what are social networks? Social networks are nothing more than ways of structuring and organizing data regarding individuals in some kind of systematic way, and typically presenting that data in some kind of visual way. So the best way to kind of think about social networks is through a couple different pictures. So let's take a look at what a very rudimentary social network might actually look like. It'll look something like this. There's me here, there's some friends there, there's friends of friends, there's a friend of a friend of a friend who connects to someone else. This is what's known as the great rule of, I think it's seven degrees of separation. If you haven't done so already, I recommend playing the very fun game of seven degrees of Kevin Bacon, in which you can connect Kevin Bacon to any other actor in Hollywood by merely seven degrees of separation. But this is a basic rudimentary social network map. Now, in social network mapping for scholarly works, you don't use stick figures. Instead, what you do is you represent your data in rather basic ways, something like this. This is what you will always see whenever you are looking at scholarly work or digital projects involving network maps. It's going to look like this. And this is because one of the key tenets of social network theory is to remove all unnecessary information and reduce everything to its core attributes. This was established uh, in the very early stages of network theory when it was being developed in the 18th century with a math problem called the Bridges of Königsberg, the Seven Bridges of Königsberg. If you have time, I recommend going and checking that out. It's worth a watch. Uh, I believe there's a couple of videos on YouTube that actually talk about it. Uh, but what you want to do in social networks when you're working with them in Python and NetworkX and Matplotlib is reduce them to these core elements. And what we see here are a series of dots that are colored differently. There's blue ones and there's red ones. These dots in network theory are called nodes. These nodes represent a single piece of data. That is typically going to be in social network theory, a person. Now it can also be a text, it can also be a place, uh, it can also be an institution, but it's gonna be a single piece of data. And what we see here is that, for example, Lee and Steve are connected via this line. These are going to have a couple different names. Sometimes they're going to be called lines in network theory, but the way in which I'm going to refer to them throughout this entire uh, lecture series is going to be how we define them and how we work with them within Python. And we're going to use the term edge, E-D-G-E, -E, edge. And what we see here is an interesting connection between Lee and uh, Gary. Lee and Gary are not connected directly at all, and yet they are connected via an intermediary named Steve. Now, one of the words that we use to describe Steve's position in this relationship is that of a broker, that a person who broker it functions as a broker between two different nodes. Now, once again, this does not have to be a person. It can be a place. It can be a text. It can be something that connects two disconnected individuals. 
Another thing that you should be somewhat familiar with, and this is going to be what we're going to eventually start seeing at the end of this series, um, when we start looking at more complex graphs. And what we're going to see here is a grouping of individuals. In this map, the creator of this image has labeled things group A, group B, and group C, and drawn a line to separate uh, what they see as some kind of important uh, separator between all three groups. What we are seeing here are, in fact, clusters. These are clusters of data points, points at which, on a network map when plotted, uh, groupings of individuals appear closer together and in large quantities. This is going to be important later on in this series when we start talking about cluster analysis with network maps. Now, all of this might look a little unfamiliar to you, but what's really interesting is that you're actually familiar with network maps whether you don't realize it or not. And, and the reason why I say that is because if you've ever seen a family tree, and chances are you have, then you are familiar with a network map. A family tree is nothing more than a top-down or bottom-up, depending on how you do it, map of individuals that are connected to people in some way. In the case of a family tree, they're connected via familial connections, so mother to son, husband to wife, etc. So these are some of the basic terms that you need to become familiar with. And these terms are node, which is a single point of data. Then there is also edge, which is the line that connects those uh, pieces of data. And then there's also the cluster, which is the grouping of data. If you're familiar with these terms and you've installed Network X and Matplotlib, then I highly encourage you to continue on with this series. Uh, beginning in the next video, I'm going to just jump right in and we're going to start importing Network X and creating individual nodes. And I'm going to go step by step in this series and take time to explain what I am doing and why I'm doing, uh, doing it this way. And throughout this video series, I'm also going to reinforce the idea that Python is actually a great tool. To, uh, to use for so, uh, analyzing social networks. And there are other options out there. There's other great options. There's Palladio, which is, uh, I believe, done by Stanford, uh, which allows you to just import CSV files or Excel files and map, map out individuals and social networks that way. There's also Heuris, which is a bit more advanced. Both of these are great tools, don't get me wrong. I find Python to be more sophisticated and better because you're able to do more nuanced things and manipulate and interact with your data in far more advanced ways than you can with these third-party applications. So I highly encourage you to spend time, get used to Python, and really consider using it for mapping out networks. And in this video series, I'm going to get you there. We're going to be able to do basic and some even advanced things with a network analysis in Python. So I hope you've found this at least a little bit, little bit informative and you stick with me and we go through this whole video series together. Thank you for listening.